Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Bridges channel. This channel is about bridges. My bridges, your bridges. And today I'm outside again. I'm on my way to a beautiful aqueduct, the Avon Aqueduct. And because this aqueduct is of difficult access to take pictures because of the vegetation, I'm going to release the Ministry of Bridges drone and hopefully I can get a very nice overview of the aqueduct. If you fly drones, please do it with consideration and follow the rules. In my case, I'm following the UK rules. Let's see how it goes. Oh, my name is Gabriel Neves and this is the Ministry of Bridges. Placed on the border of West Lothian and Falkirk districts, near White Cross, the Georgian Category A listed Avon Aqueduct is the longest and tallest aqueduct in Scotland and the second longest in Britain, after the Pontici Silt Aqueduct in Wales. The Union Canal runs from Edinburgh city centre to Falkirk, where it joins with the Forth and Clyde Canal, which, as the name states, connects the River Forth near Falkirk and the River Clyde in Glasgow. To understand this better, let's fly to north of Glasgow to the location where the Forth and Clyde Canal joins with the River Clyde. To keep this short travel easier to understand, we are navigating from west to east. The UK has many man-made water canals, one of the longest and popular in Scotland is the Forth and Clyde Canal. It is time to have a look into the east end of the Forth and Clyde Canal, where it meets with the River Carron near Falkirk on its way to the River Forth. Where the canal connects to the river, there is an outstanding monument, the Kelpies, a 30 meters high horse head steel structure designed by Andy Scott. If you are in the UK, Ireland or Australia, you must have seen some of Andy Scott's sculptures already. Usually, they are massive. Andy's sculpture was so complex that techless structures was used as advanced beam software to support designers and steel fabricators. The Fourth and Clyde Canal opened in 1790. Not much later, the authorities recognized the need to connect this canal with Edinburgh city centre. This would become the Union Canal. The differences in levels between both canals is achieved by the use of 13 locks. The first one, from the west side near Falkirk, was replaced in 2002. This rotating boat lift elevates boats 24 meters high, a great engineering achievement the Falkirk wheel. From different alternatives, Hugh Baird chose the route for what would become the Union Canal. In 1813, Baird identified the need to build at least nine locks, many regular structures and some larger structures. These locks were needed to take the Union Canal from Edinburgh levels down to the level of the Forth and Clyde Canal. Here is a tunnel dug from the rock. The three large structures, later known as the Great Aqueducts, are the Almondel, Water of Leith and Avon River Aqueducts. Moving east, 
The first one is the Avon Aqueduct, today's star. Early morning mist. Let's come back to it in a moment. Then, the Almond River Aqueduct, or better known as Almondel Aqueduct. The third is the Water of Leith Aqueduct, also known as the Slate Ford Aqueduct. This one is already inside Edinburgh city boundaries. At its very eastern point, the Union Canal is well embedded into the city centre. Nowadays, the canal is used by tourists and local communities. Cycling, jogging, walking along the side footpaths enjoying the landscape, kayaking or private or organised boat trips, the canal is used all year round. Yes, it is true, you can run, walk, cycle or kayak all the way from Edinburgh to Glasgow via the Union and Forth and Clyde canals. It could take you nearly a day or more. Maybe you can stay at a nice hotel or bed and breakfast in Linlithgow or Falkirk. Plenty of things to see and do. The canals are a place of serenity. People and wildlife coexist with respect. It is good enough for serious kayakers. Go Team GB! Now it is time to focus into the Avon River aqueduct. You have just seen why this aqueduct was needed and where it is located. Time to find out more about its history. We'll be leaving some details as subtitles. Enjoy the photos and the flight. As shown before, the Avon Aqueduct serves the Union Canal, allowing the Avon River to pass under at its western end. Baird proposed cast iron as the material for the aqueducts instead of the traditional stone built. The idea was to build cheaper and faster. Thomas Telford was one of the first engineers to explore the new material cast iron in bridges and aqueducts. It was therefore no surprise that the company requested Telford's opinion on Baird's report. Telford agreed with Baird's ideas and joined the company as consultant principal engineer. Later Baird was appointed as resident engineer for the project. There were some arguments regarding the use of stone arches and the iron troughs at the same time, but since Telford had used this in his previous two aqueducts, it was decided to keep the same approach for the three great aqueducts of the Union Canal. The construction took two years and was carried by Craven, Whitaker and Noel. Baird's cost estimations come short of the real cost because there were no provision for variation of rock head levels. Bores that were sunk along the aqueduct found the rock head at a much lower level than expected. This resulted in a claim put by the contractors. To solve the dispute, the case ended in arbitration. Ministry of Bridges couldn't find information on the result of this arbitration, but the guess is that the contractors were paid fairly.
the canal lining trough solution achieves water tightness and contains the outward pressure of the water. This resulted in a more slender structure than usual for the time. Hollow spandrels, as was characteristic of Telford's designs. To access it, there is a small door on the north side at the west hand for inspection and maintenance. Right there, covered by the vegetation. A word to those that show no respect to their own heritage. Graffiti is a way to express your opinions, art or personality. Ministry of Bridges does not consider this one art. It is just an act of no respect to our monuments. There is no hip-hop culture influence. There is no classic controversy, vandalism or art. This is just silliness. There are places for it accepted or not by the authorities. And when they are not, there are always nice places. Just ask Banksy. The Avon Aqueduct is surrounded by a beautiful natural park. This path leads to the Avon River. Let's go there. Quiet and safe, it is a paradise just near my town. This is why I love this country so much. It is indeed one of the most beautiful countries in the world. These three great aqueducts of the Union Canal, Almondel, Water of Leith, and Avon River were a state of art in their time, but did not influence the design of future aqueducts designed and built in the United Kingdom. This is one more reason to consider these great aqueducts unique jewels in Scotland. They are well worth the visit and the flight. I hope you enjoyed. And remember, if you fly this, do it safely and follow the procedures and the rules the country you are in. I'll finish this episode of Ministry of Bridges by leaving you with a question. What type of bridges do you want the Ministry of Bridges to do next? Please leave a comment. Support your Bridges channel by leaving comments, like and subscribing. Ministry of Bridges has already 250 subscribers. Thank you very much for it. But I have no doubt there are much more bridge lovers around the globe. Please support your Bridges channel by subscribing. It's all for now, Bridges people.
See you in the next episode and have a brimmer day. Learn to your home. Ha, 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 ha.